Jesus and his friends were near the Samaritan village Sychar. His disciples went into the village to buy lunch, while Jesus rested by a well, tired after the long walk. Soon a Samaritan woman came towards the well to draw water. Would you give me a drink of water? Jesus asked the woman. The woman was shocked and responded, How can you, a Jewish man, ask a Samaritan woman for a drink? She asked this because Jews in those days wouldn't be caught dead talking to Samaritans, especially a woman. But Jesus replied, If you knew the generosity of God and who I am, you would be asking me for a drink, and I would give you fresh, living water. Sir, exclaimed the woman, give me some of that. At that point, Jesus asked her to go and bring her husband back. He knew that she'd lived with many men and that she didn't have a husband. Realising that Jesus was a prophet, the woman quickly changed the subject and asked him a difficult question about where people should worship God. Jesus responded to her, It's not going to be about rules and places anymore. God is now looking for people who will worship him from their heart authentically. I know that the Messiah, the foretold rescuer, will come and explain all this to us, the woman added. Jesus said, the Messiah is me. Your wait is over. Do I have a story for you? This happened like maybe a few weeks ago, but I just haven't been able to stop talking about it. You see, I was going to the well, and oh, it was so hot. I go in the heat of the day when, and by the time I get home, the water in my jug is tepid, but I'm going in the heat of the day because the well is deserted then. No village woman with their snide remarks and their sly glances and their judgment on my life. I go to the well alone. But this day it was different. As I was going to the well, I I looked and I saw someone there and it was a man. Not only was it a man, It was a Jew man. And I thought, what is a Jew doing in Samaria? They treat us like scum. Oh, it happened so many years ago, but the hatred still exists. You see, the Assyrians came and captured the northern kingdom, while our brothers in the southern kingdom of Judah just watched as our men, women, and children were slaughtered or taken into slavery. To make things worse, they brought foreigners in to live among us. What could we do? We were a captive people. We had to survive. So we married our younger daughters to their men, and our daughters bore their children. We even worshiped some of the gods that they believed in, something that the Jews never forgave us for to this day. Well, I was watching that man waiting for him to leave that well, and he didn't seem like he was going to leave anytime soon. So I thought I might as well go and fetch my water because he isn't going to talk to me anyway. Jews share nothing with Samaritans, not food or drink or even a kind word. So the most I could expect would be cold indifference born of his ignorance. There would be no kindness there. So I went up to the well, and you can imagine my surprise. I almost dropped my rope when he spoke to me. And he said, give me a drink. 
And I looked up at him and to his eyes, and, and he looked back at me, not as a Samaritan woman, a natural enemy, nor did he or could he know that I was a fallen woman. He just looked at me as someone just like anybody else who was sharing a small patch of earth waiting for a drink of water. And I said to him, Sir, how is it that you, a Jew, can ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink of water? And I didn't know this then, but I later found out that with him, there were no divisions. He didn't think that it was okay for any people to treat others as if they meant nothing. For he demonstrated love to everyone. It is us that put up the walls of division. It is us that create the hate. You know, I wonder if in 2,000 years from now, there will still be divisions and hate in this world. And then he said to me, if you knew the gift of God and and the one speaking to you, asking for a drink, you would ask him for a drink and he would give you living water. Living water. To us Samaritans, living water was the cool water that ran in the streams, not the water that was in the well. Living water. That's what he was offering. And I said to him, how do you... Oh, well, well, then all of a sudden, I noticed he, he didn't have a bucket. And I thought, how is he planning on getting this water? And I asked him, I said, how do you plan on getting that water? The well is deep. And you don't even have a bucket. I was getting angry. I thought, who does he think he is? Is is he some man trying to play some trick on a Samaritan woman? And in anger, I said to him, do you think you are greater than Jacob, our father, who gave us this well and who drank from it along with his sons and his livestock? I didn't want him to think I was ignorant. I knew my town's history. I knew the Talmud. I knew everything that a woman was allowed to know. And so I stood there in defiance, and I hoped I looked proud. But inside I was weeping. And he said to me, he who drinks of this water shall thirst again. And I knew he was talking about the water in the well. But I also wonder, was he talking about my anger, my defiance, my pride? And then he said, but whoever drinks the water which I give him, it will spring up into them, welling up into eternal life. And I said, sir, give me this water so I won't have to come to the well. And I was thinking, so I wouldn't have to face rejection and hatred anymore. And then I thought, I thought that he knew me. I don't know how it was possible that he knew me, but I just believed that he knew me. 
And then he said to me, go get your husband and come back. Why, he didn't know me at all. He didn't know that I was the black widow of Samaria. But yet, and he he didn't, or could he know all the things that I had ever done? And I said to him, I do not have a husband. I was going for proud. But this time there was no fire in my belly. It was only the dull ache of disappointment. And he said to me, you're right when you say you do not have a husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your own. And I thought, this man must be a prophet. And I told him, you must be a prophet. But I was thinking, why me? Why did he come to me? There were a number of women in the town that were more worthy, that were more holy. I could have pointed out a number of them. But he chose me. And I thought, everything about religion that I had thought was, was it wrong? The rules, the laws of judgment, the checklist of good behavior. Was that all false? But I wasn't ready to ask him those questions. And so I said to him, we Samaritans worship God on this mountain, but you Jews claim to worship God in Jerusalem. And he said to me, woman, the time is coming when you will neither worship God on this mountain or in Jerusalem. For what you Samaritans worship, you do not know. But we know. For salvation belongs to the Jews. And despite myself, my heart sank. Was this man of God? Was he spouting off Jewish propaganda that I had heard from false teachers? Was he right that, that maybe the, God did prefer them as they claimed? And then he said to me, but a time is coming and the time is now when we will worship God in spirit and in truth. For God, the Father, is spirit. And we must worship him in spirit. Those are the kind of worshipers that the Father seeks. Everything around me seemed the same. But something had changed. And I said to him, When the Messiah comes, he will explain everything to us. Because right then, I wanted to know everything. And he looked at me face to face, and he said, I, who am speaking to you, I am he. He was the Messiah. He was the one that offered me the living water. Me, an outcast, a fallen, despised woman. And I felt a shout rising within me, and and I could have leapt ten feet in the high. And I almost left my feet behind as I ran towards the town. They had it all wrong. We all had it all wrong. 
Salvation is not something that you earn. It is something that is given. It is the living water that is everlasting and unending. It's the living water of salvation. It is a gift from God. And as I ran to the town, I was used to running in the shadows, but now I was in the light. I felt free and almost beautiful as everything was exposed and I had to let them know. And everyone I met, I went up to and I said, come and see the man who told me everything I'd ever done. Could he be the Messiah? Come and see the man who told me everything I had ever done. Could he be the Messiah? I knew he was the Messiah, but I wanted them to know. And they must have seen something different in me, for they came. And for two days he stayed with our town. And for two days we asked our questions, and he gave us his answers. For two days I watched as a spring of living water sprung into one heart after another and another and another. Well, that's my story. And I need to get to the well now because my friends are waiting for me. You know those women that used to scorn me? No more going to the well in the heat of the day. No more going to the well alone. For I have accepted the living water. And I hope that you have accepted it too. And if you thirst, go to the well. Meet him face to face. He is waiting for you. Friends, in this story of the woman at the well, I incorporated what she might be feeling or thinking. So I thought it was a difficult face-to-face with Jesus as her sin was exposed and his grace was revealed. The one thing that struck me about this story is as soon as she accepted this living water, she had to run and race and tell the town about Jesus, for them to meet him. This was a town that despised her, that ostracized her, that had hatred and spite against her for years and years, yet she wanted them to know about Jesus. So now go in peace and take the living water and give it to someone who thirsts. Amen.